What's up guys? It is Carly here bringing you day number 19 of my 31 days of horror and once again I'm going to be talking about just a classic movie that um, I'm sure everyone has seen by now and that is Friday the 13th um, from the year 1980 and yeah the reason I'm talking about this one is because um, once again I saw another double feature last night which was A Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th at a drive-in near me. Um, it was kind of a last minute event that they did and I went with two friends and um, it was a pretty pretty cool time especially the atmosphere. I mean um, it was a clear night. It wasn't raining or anything and it was actually starting to finally get chilly out because um, here where I live it's been like really hot lately even though we're in the middle of October at this point but um, it finally was starting to get pretty chilly outside so um, it was a pretty cool atmosphere to watch the movies in but anyway I figured I would talk about this film since since it is now fresh in my memory again and um, yeah so Friday the 13th this movie is about a group of camp counselors they are going to Camp Crystal Lake because um, this dude Steve Christie is trying to reopen the camp for like inner city kids to come to so um, a group of camp counselors go up there to help finish setting the place up uh, I believe they have like two weeks so they're up there alone you know there's no kids and um, they're all just kind of hanging out and helping uh, finish setting the place up um, meanwhile there is someone lurking around and they start killing them off one by one so you know you got your typical slasher going there so Friday the 13th, um, this is a movie I've seen many times growing up and um, even now I rewatch it quite a bit. It's definitely one of my favorite horror movies of all time um, and honestly it's probably one of my favorite in the Friday the 13th franchise. A lot of people don't tend to like this one a whole lot but I've always found it to be very enjoyable and rewatchable. Um, some things I've noticed about it that I just really like is the uh, general setting and atmosphere and it's I really like how throughout most of the movie it starts raining really hard it just makes it feel very miserable especially you have the uh, you know the counselors are kind of running around in the raincoats at nights and um, it just seems very miserable and uh, realistic um, that's one thing that I really appreciated because I saw this movie in theaters I believe last year as well and um, it really kind of opened my eyes seeing it on the big screen just um, how great and um, kind of gloomy the atmosphere is um, so yeah I really like that about it I also like the characters in the movie um, once again some people might it's probably not their favorite group of characters but I've always liked them I really like um, Marcy and um, I forget his name but Kevin Bacon's character I like the part where she's telling the story about her dream about the blood and the rain and things like that so I just really like the little sort of um, side things that are going on within this film. Um, the um, main girl, you know, Alice as the final girl, I've always thought she was just okay. She's not really anything special. That's probably one of the biggest flaws of this movie is she's kind of just this plain girl and um, she doesn't have a whole lot of personality going for her, but I still think she's likable. I just don't think she's um, very Stand outish, so um, for having her as a final girl might not be, um, it's not a major critique or anything like that for me, but um, I could see why that could be a problem with some people. There's also some scenes throughout this movie that are almost maybe a little bit unnecessary. Like, you do get a full scene of Alice just making coffee, and it's kind of, it's supposed to, I guess, build suspense because she's alone waiting for the dude to come back or any of her friends really to come back to that matter because at that point everyone has kind of gone missing and um, she's kind of trying to pass the time and stay calm. So I could see why it was in there just for the purpose of building some suspense, but um, nothing really comes out of that scene. There's no jump scare or anything like that. So it is kind of a uh, just a filler scene. And once again, though, it doesn't really bother me. I know parts like that, but I don't really care about it. I don't find the movie to be pretty entertaining. It might not be the funnest of movies, especially when you talk about the Friday franchise. There's a lot of fun ones within this franchise, especially later on. Of course, you get actually Jason doing the killings, but for me, I've always 
found this to be a pretty easy watch and one that I tend to go back to the most out of all of them. So, yeah, I really like it. Um, the reveal of Mrs. Voorhees does kind of come out of nowhere, and rewatching it again, the fight scene between her and Alice is pretty weak and kind of ridiculous because she's just like this older woman and she's kind of slapping her around and it's very much like a cat fight when you watch it. Um, that was the first time I really realized that it's kind of lame, but um, once again, I, I'm, I don't really mind it too much. I can kind of look past it, but um, if I'm really talking about flaws, that's probably one of the biggest flaws in the film. Um, some of the effects aren't overly that great either with the discoloration of skin whenever there's cuts and it's just very, very obviously fake, but yeah, overall those are just minor flaws for me. I really don't mind it. Um, I really love Friday the 13th. As I said, it's probably up there with one of my favorite horror movies of all time at this point, and I give it, um, I would give it probably an 8.5 out of 10. Um, my ratings usually kind of change on this one from 8 to 8.5, but I do really enjoy it, so 8.5 out of 10 for Friday the 13th. Thank you guys once again for joining me for day 19 of my 31 Days of Horror, and I will see you for day 20.